Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today we're talking about the new OCG ban list that just got came out today. Uh, I gotta say, I love how transparent the OCG is. They, like, weeks and weeks ahead of time, literally told them the exact date it was coming on when they already kind of had a de an idea of when it was coming. Uh, they just do it more, they just do it more straightforward than the TCG does. But a lot of hits here, as you can see. We're going to get through these. Listen, I'm, I'm no connoisseur of the OCG. I, I keep a bird's eye view on the OCG, like a holistic view, but I don't, I don't know the nitty gritty. So we're going to go through it. I'm going to talk about some of these things, maybe some things on how some of these cards relate to the TCG potentially going forward and uh, go from there. So let's get into it. Starting off, Beatrice. This is the only banned card, funny enough. I think that's probably right. Uh, Beatrice, to me, has uh, errata written all over it. I think it's going to get errated in a couple years, and it'll come back, and it'll either be dead because they errat it too hard, or it'll be only good in, like, specific decks. So we'll see. Moving on. Uh, all the limits. A lot of limits here. A lot of interesting stuff. You got four cards coming off the list in Dryden, Masterpiece, Dragoon, and Snatch Steel. Um, zooming through these real quick. Snatch Steel kind of surprises didn't come off when Mikanko was getting support, like, a year ago. But whatever. Dragoon, uh, Dragoon to me is only scary, like really scary if Verte is legal. But as long as Verte is banned for them as well, I, I think I'm okay with Dragoon. Uh, most decks, and most competitive decks have ways to deal with Dragoon. Uh, same thing with Masterpiece, like it's kind of just power creep uh, at this point. Now I would be scared that like hopefully Konami doesn't have crazy plans to give like true draco new support anytime soon because then i think this card becomes very scary but i think with where the true draco engine is and where modern day decks power levels and utility of like being able to remove cards like these i think i think it's probably okay and then dryden i i, I just made a video two days ago talking about how can konami get dry uh, zodiac cards off the ban list uh and actually going deeper into discussions after that video i actually think dryden's probably okay because you can only like cheap summon it once per turn uh, so I think he's actually okay. But anyway. Uh, Alright, those, those are the unlimits. Very cool to see. Um, moving on to the limits. Uh, so I think all of these except for Bonfire are going straight from 3 to 1. So you have for, you know, your Snake Eye stuff, you've got uh, Diabell Star, Poplar, and Bonfire. So you're losing one copy of Bonfire and two copies of each of these. Nobody is really playing three Poplar, usually two. So they are losing four more copies of main deck cards for Snake Eye consistency uh plus i guess fiendsmith so like probably two engraver as well so snake eye just straight up lost like another like six main deck slots and you know in the tcg we tend to a lot of players tend to not love the consistency hit like uh, a way of taking on a ban list but i guess if you do it in this much volume because i think they have ash at one wanted at one now dia belsar and poplar to one bonfire to one fiendsmith uh engraver to one like They've lost like t straight up ten main deck cards. You can only supplement that many that many consistency cards with with so much. But uh, we'll have to see where they sit after this. Um, next up, you move to the one Tempai Dragon hit. This I believe, this guy is their tuner, right? So this may kill the deck, right? The, just just really trying to limit act consistency and access to the tuner. Um, maybe it won't. Right, like like they do have a lot of options, extra options for consistency too. But um, I don't know. The, this card is interesting, and I think with like the more charmies getting printed too. Like even though they were trying to hit the deck at the same time, they also were kind of giving cards to like maybe the only deck in the game that really can afford to main deck those types of cards, or as everybody else has to side them. So they're just getting an extra one third of value at least, uh, just being able to bring it in, um, you know, for game one. Um, interesting though, like I, I honestly don't know if this is be this will be enough because they usually don't. I mean, like I guess they don't mind hard drawing it, but a lot of times they're like pulling it out of the deck, and so it doesn't limit that. But uh, it does it does hurt for sure because they wanted to play two or three of this card no matter what anyway. So yeah, uh, Phantom of Ubel goes from three to one. I actually really like this. I think one of the craziest things about Ubel was what Phantom allows them to do grind wise it's obviously a really good answer to stuff like nib and if somebody's trying to save a hand trap later and you can get this early obviously that's a pain um but man this if you're able to play two or three of this and like literally after you you literally make this a stop nib 
And then you could just make it again. You can't use its negate again in the same turn, but you can make a second one in the same turn. So then you just make an extra negate. Like, it's insane. This card is crazy. Uh, I think one makes sense. I really do. I know it's new, but like, I think it one is totally fine. So it makes this card crazy, and everybody's going to need one, but more than one seems so crazy in the grind. Uh, then the Fiendsmith hits. So this is these. They don't have Sanctus Band like we do. Uh, but they're going after more main deck hits with, um, with uh, you know, Engraver 1 and uh, this is Tractus. I think this is Tractus to 1. Now, they still have Sanctus, and Stan Sanctus still does stuff on its own too. Um, but you do limit some of the better, the better cards to open in the engine. Um, so that's cool. And then Bonfire. Bonfire kind of plays into a couple things. Obviously Snake Eye. Uh, but also low key with Bonfire. Rising is still probably too new for them to want to hit it in the OCG, even though it's performing really well competitively. But this is kind of a way for them to kind of trick people into being like, we're hitting Snake Eye. But also, we're taking another consistency card away from uh, uh, Rising at the same time. So, I feel that. All right, into the semi limits. Normally, semi limits are lame as hell, but there actually are some really spicy ones here. So, Ava, we don't care. Panker Tops, we don't care. MX Saber Invoker, we don't care. If the difference between 2 and 1 Invoker and Ava doesn't matter. Pendulum, he shouldn't have been on here anyway. Fusion Destiny, who cares? Uh, branded Opening, the difference between 1 and 2 is whatever. 1 and 3, maybe we're talking, but 1 and 2 is okay, sure. The interesting ones to me are, uh, for the ones at least coming off the list, are Terror Top, Speed Word Support coming, and with MX Saber Invoker, like, back back, like, this if they release one more of this this is just a straight up engine with that means like without normal summon we make mx saber invoker which isn't the craziest thing in the world but like they're also releasing some zoo stuff so like that does make that kind of spicy for zoo but we'll see uh and then i think gold sark is, is pretty interesting to me i just think with malice and like thunder dragon get having colossus back in i think both formats now um this card is a little scary i, I like it's just Foolish Burial-esque. It's probably where it's definitely worse generically on like how many decks it applies to and how many situations it applies to, but like it's 2024. Konami has definitely shown a propensity lately to lean more into like uh, into making more archetypes that are based around banishing. And so if 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 banish becomes more and more of a utilized area of the game, kind of like the graveyard was, like the graveyard used to be the graveyard, like it was kind of bad to go there in early Yu-Gi-Oh, and then they we've slowly come along. We're like the graveyard's good. It's a second hand now. Um, I do just scared that it's like not once per turn, just like basically gets any monster in the deck banished. Right, that's my only concern. If it was a harder turn, I'd probably be cool with it. But like, if it's at two, then like, are they? Going to make it at three soon? Like, that's that's what I'm more so worried about. I'm not that scared of two, but, like, just three and not hard ones per turn. It just makes me feel like we're going to see it get limited again, basically. All right, and then you have the three at the bottom. Nightmare Throne. A small one-card hit in the main deck cons uh, for consistency for you, Bell. Sure. Uh, goes in match. Goes from three to two. Probably correct. Uh, we're seeing in the TCG has been really proactive in hitting uh, the broken... Uh, floodgates over the last year uh good to see that the ocg is also trending a little bit in that direction as well and then you have maxi this is probably the biggest thing on this list like obviously there are cards that maybe for this immediate format like cool phantom of you bell is a big hit to one right stuff like that the fiendsmith hits but in terms of just straight up oh sorry one more thing beatrice band and i don't the ocg doesn't have necro quip princess or star eater so, the, what does the Fiendsmith engine do now? <laughs> like, I guess it just gets you bodies, but you're not, like, making a rank 6 now, I don't think. And, because you just you just can't put two 6s on the field. Oh, that's extra interesting. Okay, just, just something to keep in mind. Uh, anyway, and uh, still may be good enough as just an engine that gets you bodies to, like, just keep climbing and stuff. But uh, he, they do not make rank 6s anymore. I think, in the OCG. And then you have... Uh, sorry, back to Maxi. So so there are some other hits that, like, for this immediate format may be bigger, but as far as, like, holistic, the entire game of their, like, competitive scene, Maxi going down to two is a pretty big hit. I mean, that's that's literally a one-card hit to every single deck in the game. If you were playing an eight competitive deck in, in the OCG, it had three Maxi in it. That's just what you had to do. It's the best card in the game. If You, you know what I mean? Uh, you're going to play it. 
So this is really interesting. I, I don't know where to go from here. This is a weird middle ground where it's like, okay, it's not a one of, so it's not as like as crazy sacky as it could be at one. But also like now you just took it from what are, I, I forgot what the percentages are for like a 40 card deck, like a three of and a 40 card deck is something like you have at least a one third chance to draw it or something. Is it now closer to like 20, 25% chance to draw it? Maybe that's okay, and maybe that's a place enough where, like, some decks that hard lose to Mexi just have a little more leeway, because they're just not going to run into it as much. It's not gone, but it means those decks that were just like, ugh, dude, every three games my opponent has Mexi, and I just can't beat Mexi. Well, now is it every four games? And you just get a little more leeway. Now you get an extra game, uh, you know, an extra two or three games throughout a tournament uh, where you don't have to run into Mexi. Um, so I, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't know if it's right or not. Cause like, I think a lot of people have said, uh, between the OSG and the, in the TCG, like zero or three, like you kind of either want it to be a full part of the format and that's just your decision or gone. Cause you don't want to be more sacky. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, wow. I'm actually really surprised to see it. Maybe, maybe them coming out with the, the Mulcharmies is them trying to lean away from Maxi, because we, they're like, we have side deckable, less powerful versions of Maxi to hopefully run, for the fill the place of it, but still like, fill the role of, uh, you know, limiting the ceiling on certain decks, especially when you go second. Interesting. All right, and then for the unlimits, nothing too crazy here. Uh, there's like one card that's interesting to me, but nothing else. Uh, oh, you get all the Dragon Rose going to three. Who cares? Plush Fire has the errata. Spiral Quick Fix, as long as they still have Master Plane on the ban list. Don't know if they do. There's that. Karen, doesn't matter. Lightning Storm, Raigeki, those are already at two. I don't know who was really trying to squeeze three into the side deck, but you can now. Sure. Those cards didn't need to be on there. And then Pearly, uh, my friend Pearly, like, Sure. Um, Zeus is the one interesting one to me, especially with the the, uh, the Zodiac stuff, right? MX Saber Invoker plus two Terror Top. If on the next ban list they get the third Terror Top, like, could we see a Zoo list that's literally like... And I, again, I don't know how many Barrage they have in the OC. I don't know if they have Barrage Band, Broadbill Band, and Rat Pure 1 just like we do in the TCG. I honestly don't, so I'd have to look into that. Um, but you're telling me they get the Dryden. They get MXA Revoker with two, even maybe even two is enough to play the Terra Top engine, the Speedroid engine. But if they get a third one on the next list, then definitely. And we have Zeus going to three, which is actually a huge thing for them. Like Zoo, to play Zoo, especially as a pure deck, you you have to have more than one Zeus. At least two. Um, and maybe even three. Like we'll see. Um, but it's cool. A um, lot of hits here. A lot, a lot of hits here. I am scared because Rizal's already been showing out early in their format, and then they're kind of hitting the other decks that have already been getting beaten by Rizal early on uh, fairly significantly here. So I'm scared Rizal's going to be like tier zero for them just because they're hitting the second and third best deck pretty good here. But uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Very interesting ban list. Um, I'd love some of these Zodiac buffs. I'd love it. But uh, obviously we'll have to wait and see on that but i'm out here for today guys thank you so much for watching as always let me know your thoughts down below on this list and and what you hope maybe the tcg takes from this list and maybe applies to our next list because we generally do fall about a month behind the or three months behind the, the ocg um i'd love to hear your guys thoughts on that but i'm out here for today thanks for watching as always i will see you in the next video peace